The mass shooting in Las Vegas unfolded on a scale that has confounded the public, and investigators too. The amateur and police footage of that night is horrifying. But by forensically analysing these clips, we are able to draw perhaps the most complete picture to date of what happened. We lined up the sound of gunfire in different videos, and using the hour, minute and second these clips were recorded, we mapped over 30 videos on a timeline covering the entire event. More evidence will emerge, and this is not the definitive picture. But this reconstruction puts you, the viewer, at the concert. We show what it must have felt like to be caught in a rampage, not knowing where to run or when the next round of bullets would come. And our wide-ranging investigation reveals what unfolded minute by chaotic minute. The gunman's 12 bursts into the festival crowd, his targeting of police, and the lulls in his shooting that allowed concert goers a chance to flee. It's 10pm and more than 20,000 people are watching country singer Jason Aldean at the Route 91 Harvest Festival. Across the street, the gunman Stephen Paddock is in a corner suite on the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Hotel. He planned his attack meticulously. He had assembled an arsenal, bolted an exit door shut, installed surveillance cameras in the hallway and calculated his elevation and distance from the crowd. A few minutes into the show, Paddock fires what appear to be single rounds from his hotel room. Video timestamps reveal that this happened after 10.05. Why doesn't Paddock fire more rounds at first? There are at least two theories. He's checking that the range and trajectory of his gunshots match the calculations he made, or he's firing at fuel tanks in the nearby airport. Whatever the reason, an uneasiness fills the crowd and people move toward the exit. 30 seconds later, we hear what sounds like automatic gunfire. It's the first of 12 bursts Paddock fired at the festival. More people begin to leave at the rear and lights are turned on. Around the time of this first burst, security officer Jesus Campos is looking into a separate incident when he happens to come across the door Paddock had sealed shut. Paddock appears to be alerted to Campos as he is leaving and fires through the hotel door, wounding Campos in the leg. Campos takes cover in a doorway and calls in the shooting on his radio. The police and armed security officers begin to respond from within the hotel. 36 seconds after the first burst, Paddock fires a second one into the crowd. The cracking sound you hear are bullets passing nearby. The intensity suggests Paddock was aiming very near this area by the front of stage, the densest part of the crowd. There is a short interval here of 17 seconds. People begin to flee again. But then a third burst of fire opens up. The changing pitch of the crack suggests Paddock is spraying the bullets around the area. A fourth burst hits the crowd just 20 seconds later. By our count, Paddock has now fired over 300 rounds in less than two minutes. The scenes that unfold at this point are distressing. There are multiple injuries stage left and people begin to treat the wounded around them. At this point, there's a break in the shooting of almost 1 minute and 50 seconds. We don't know what Paddock is doing during this interval. It's possible he fired down the hallway again. We have reporting that by now, Campos has been joined by hotel engineer Stephen Shook, who reports gunfire on his hotel radio. It's at the end of the hallway. Uh, I, can't, I can't tell you what room. He looked like he fired down the hallway when I got close to the door. Whatever the reason, this break in the shooting allowed many people to move to safety. At 10.08, a police car arrives along Las Vegas Boulevard. A minute later, police officers are moving along a wall in the direction of Mandalay Bay to get eyes on the shooter. They direct fleeing concert goers back into the venue and away from gunfire. 
Hey, you guys, get down. Go that way. Get out of here. There's gunshots coming from over there. Then Paddock fires a fifth burst. It's around 22 bullets in three short volleys. We hear this same burst from a different angle, at the Mandalay, where cab driver Corey Langdon was filming. Here's what it sounds like up close. Our reporting suggests that Paddock was positioned directly above the camera at this point. Then, just 40 seconds later, you can hear very dull and hollow gunfire. Now it sounds like it's coming from um, farther away. These rounds were not picked up by cameras recording in the festival at this time. That, plus our additional analysis, suggests this is Paddock firing indoors again, possibly toward Campus and Shook, who are still in the hallway. This lull in shooting outside lasted just over a minute and allowed more people to flee. But then, a sixth burst of fire. Twenty seconds later, in a seventh burst, Paddock appears to take aim at the police. Just 20 feet away, more police are taking cover behind a patrol car. <laughs> They take direct fire and call it in over the radio. So if you're moving that officer Scott, Mandalay Bay, Northbound, right outside Route 91 to the south end. It's now been over six minutes since the shooting began, and the area at stage right is mostly empty. But people are still taking cover at stage left when Paddock fires an eighth burst. Should we get up? Should we get up? Meanwhile, at the Mandalay, Paddock fires a ninth burst of fire right over a line of cabs and into the crowd. Taxi driver Corey Langdon still sees no signs of panic. Where are the cops at? I'm right here by the porch at Mandalay Bay and everything just seems to be normal here. And hotel guests are still by the lobby. Shots fired. But actually, police were there. Up in the hotel, two officers are closing in on the gunman. I'm inside the Mandalay Bay on the 31st floor. I can hear the automatic fire coming from one floor ahead, one floor above us. And even as police are responding both inside and outside the hotel, Paddock unleashes his 10th burst of fire. More police cars approach along Las Vegas Boulevard. Control, we need all units stop coming. Further along, people are fleeing through the rear between bursts. Keep your head down, run this way. Nearly a minute and ten seconds pass before his eleventh assault. By now, Paddock is no longer firing in long, steady bursts. Keep your head down, run that way. We don't know why, but he may be struggling with a sluggish weapon or using a different gun. He fires his 12th and final burst as Corey Langdon leaves the Mandalay. It's less than 50 rounds. The rate of fire slows, and at five seconds, it's the shortest of his bursts. All the taxi drivers are gone now. It's 10.17, and concert goers are still fleeing at the far side of the venue. Is there somebody out there? Twelve minutes after the first bullet was fired, police close in on the gunman on the 32nd floor. Control 590K, I have a team of four. We're going to make entry to the shark. We have to make a contact to the suspect. See if we can get up to him. 169, we're doing that right now. 32nd floor. Copy, we're going to make our way to give you support. By now, Paddock is no longer firing on the crowd and police continue to move closer to his room. 
They evacuate guests. For 159, we're doing evacuations as we're working our way down the hallway. We're about 130 minutes in on the suspect's door. I need everybody in that hallway to be aware of it and get back. We need to pop this and see if we get any type of response from this guy to see if he's in here or if he's actually moved out somewhere else. Breach, breach, breach. We are clearing this room. We have one suspect father. The police find 23 guns and hundreds of rounds of ammunition inside Paddock's suite. By our count, he fired close to 900 rounds at the festival. The police say he fired another 200 into the hallway. Paddock was found dead from a self-inflicted gunshot. The 64-year-old killed at least 58 people, and over 500 were wounded. It was one of the deadliest shootings in modern American history.